Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to set up our quest script file. So I'm going to create a new C Sharp script inside of my questing folder here, and I'm going to call it quest. Now, this is going to be the base class that all of our quests are actually deriving from. So first of all, let's think about what is a quest? What does a quest need? It's going to need a name. It's going to need maybe a description if you want to show that in your UI. It's going to need a goal based on the goal class that we just wrote there. It's going to need to know whether it's been completed or not. Maybe a list of potential item rewards or potential experience rewards, whatever your game would need for that. So let's start with what we know. We're going to have a public string quest name, have a public string called description. Maybe I'm not sure I'll use this in the UI, but it'll be there if you want it. A public goal. Now the goal that we just created. So then we're going to say, oh, we'll just call it goal. And then a Boolean that's true or false if we have completed it. So completed. And then we can also set up that list of maybe just uh, some items we can do for now. Later on in the integration course, we will set up the inventory system with the questing system so that you can actually have item rewards work with the inventory and crafting system that we set up in the past. It's going to be a list. For now, it's going to be string. Later on, it'll be item IDs or item names. And it's going to be item rewards. That's all the data that a quest is going to need for now. I also want to have a public method that we can call to complete the quest. So if we were to actually complete the goal, then we can say, okay, complete the quest and grant the reward to the player, whatever that might be. So I'll say complete. Whenever we call complete, then we will maybe for now, just log out quest completed. I also want to have a method that's going to grant the reward. So if we have, again, a list of items, I want to go through each of those and add it to the inventory. But for now, we'll just say, hey, look what you got in the console. So it'll be a public void grant reward. And I'll again just log out here. Turning in quest, granting reward and then for now i'll just say for each of these uh strings in item rewards i'll just log out what we got as a reward so i'll say string item in item rewards so for each string in item rewards that we called item we will do a simple log and just log it out maybe concatenate onto the front of that rewarded with Just like that. Pretty cool. And now once all this is said and done, and once we get the event system set up, we'll have to sprinkle that throughout to our bit. But for now, all I want to do is once we have completed the quest and the reward was granted, I want to just destroy this. Now, the reason this works and the reason the whole system works is because quest is going to be added as a component onto an object in our game for every quest that we accept we will add that component to a an object maybe a quest uh, controller object and if the quest object is active in game then all the goals that we have on it will be active as well and they will be listening for events to fire off but once a quest is completed i simply want to destroy that component that was on that quest object so it no longer has any goals that are active, therefore no longer listening for any events, so we don't clog anything up. And this will all makes sense here in just a second, but just keep in mind that quest, even the derived forms of quest, will be a component on an object. That's what makes them active, that's what makes them start tracking goals, so you can track the progress of that quest. Once the quest is done, we want to remove the component from the object and to do that all you have to do is simply destroy and then pass in this don't say game object because that will destroy the whole game object you want to destroy this instance of quest this instance that is added as a component to the quest object and then once we're completed here we'll just call grant reward and we'll be using all this a bit later on here 
And now let's create a quest based on this quest framework here. So I'll create a new C sharp script file and I will call this one vampire slayer slayer. I'll add quest on there. So vampire slayer quest. Now vampire slayer quest, as you guessed, will inherit from quest which itself is a mono behavior. So this is also a mono behavior, which means this can still be added as a component. Pretty cool. Now for our quest, we want to add a quest name, a description, a goal, some rewards, that kind of thing. So we're going to set that up in our derived class. So let's get rid of these default methods here. And I want to do all this in a, an awake method. This happens before start. And it's very important that once this is added, that it immediately gets initialized and all the data is immediately set up because once it's added, we want to use that data for the UI or for the tracking of the quest. Whenever we kill a vampire, that kind of thing, we want to make sure that it is immediately available. So we're going to do a wake, which is called before start. Now we'll say the name. So the quest name is equal to vampire slayer. And the description, slay some vampires. Again, probably not going to use that in the UI, but it's there if you want to. Item rewards is equal to, now this is a list of string, right? So all I have to do is say new list, and then we can add on what it's initialized with. So it's initialized with the value of burnt salmon. Maybe it also comes with some rusty chains. I don't know. Whatever you want to reward for completing Vampire Slayer. And last but not least, I want to set up the goal. So goal is equal to, now this is going to use a kill goal. But keep in mind, quest only looks for a goal. So anything that derives from goal can be used as a goal for a quest. So if we have a kill goal, or we have a collection goal, or we have a location goal, all those things can be assigned to the goal variable because they are all goals. They are all derived from goal. So now we use the constructor for kill goal to pass in the amount needed. So what to say we kill five vampires and vampires are ID of zero. Now, if we wanted to kill chickens, we would say ID of one. Maybe we kill two chickens. This is whatever you want to be required to complete the quest. And one thing I want to do is I want quest on complete, I want this to be a virtual method that we can override in a derived class. And to do that, all I'm going to do is say public virtual. And this means that vampire slayer quest can have its own complete method, or it can use the one from quest, whichever you want to do. So if you want to do something unique or specific, whenever you complete vampire slayer quest, then you can do that here. If you only wanted to do the reward with the items and stuff like you do in the quest object itself, then you can do that too. I'll have a public override. Now it tells me what I can override. I can override complete and based on complete, as you know, is going to call the base classes complete method. So it's going to do all this stuff in here. I can also do that and then do something else. Or I could do that not at all and just do something else entirely. Whatever you want to do. In this case, we will just do the base complete method for now. But this is there just in case you want to add extra stuff whenever you complete the quest. Maybe there's a door you want to unlock somewhere. So you just say, um, call this method here. Then you do whatever you do for your system to unlock doors. Or maybe you want to unlock a level or unlock a new piece of armor that uh, you have to go to a store and buy and not just be given to your inventory. That kind of thing. Pretty cool. And now that we have a quest object inside of goal, whenever that I actually complete the goal, what I want to do is say quest.complete. So goals are going to need an associated quest, right? So I'll have a public quest and I'll call it quest. And then whenever we complete the goal, we want to say also the, comp the, the entire quest is completed. We only have one goal. You could have a list of goals very easily, but in this case, I only have one goal. So quest dot complete just to keep it a bit simpler. And now what we have to do is in kill goal, 
we have to accept in our parameter here so that we can actually pass in this quest reference. So the goal is on this quest, but goal doesn't know of quest unless we pass the quest to it. It has no idea what quest it's on. So that means this doesn't know what quest to complete. So I have to pass in the quest so it knows what quest to complete. And the quest, for instance, Vampire Slayer quest, that's the reference it wants. So I'll pass in this. And it's going to say, hey, that's not a thing because this only takes two parameters. So then in kill goal, I'll take in a quest parameter. And then all I have to do is say this.quest is equal to quest. And there we go. Now our goal knows what the quest is. Pretty cool. And that's going to be it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to start writing our event controller, which is going to glue everything together. So my name is Austin and I will see you there.